Since the addition of Ender Pearls, players have been trying to find the most unique ways of using them to teleport as far as possible. When bubble columns were added, it allowed players to reliably store an active Ender Pearl and teleport on command via redstone signal. And that was the origin of the Ender Porter. The objective for today's video is to build a device that can send redstone signal thousands of blocks away in less than one second. This will then activate the Ender Pearl Stasis Chamber and instantly teleport the player. We also want to be able to go seamlessly back and forth without any cooldown or delay. And we want to be able to build all this in vanilla survival Minecraft. I'm making this video in the version 1.21.4, so things may be a bit different depending on when you're watching this video. Now let's do this. The main mechanic that makes Ender Porters work is Ender Pearl Stasis Chamber. It's a simple bubble column setup with a soul sand at the bottom and 5 blocks of water on top. Normally, when a player throws an ender pearl, he is teleported when the pearl hits a block. But the stasis chamber allows us to keep the pearl floating in the bubble column without activating the teleportation. The player can then use trapdoor and redstone to control when the pearl triggers. This means that we are able to control when the player teleports with redstone, and we can take that off from our list. The problem now is that sending redstone signal on long distances can be very slow. Sending signal for thousands of blocks with a conventional redstone dust and repeater setup would definitely take more than one second. There is also a limit to the distance that is being rendered around the player, but more on that in the next chapters. So now, we have to find a solution for these issues. Luckily, Minecraft actually offers a brilliant solution for instantly sending signal on very long distances. And that is the instant wire. Now, I'm not the one who discovered this, and I'm not going to go into too much detail about how and why this works. If you're interested, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube that go into more depth. I will put some mentions in the description. What is important for us is that this is the perfect solution to our problem. When we set up the wire correctly, we can transmit signal instantly on very, very long distances. And the best part is that it even works in both directions. So unlike redstone dust that would require two wires to send signal back and forth, the instant wire allows us to do this with just one wire. This already allows us to teleport instantly very, very far. And we can take that off from our list. But if we are going to use the instant wire, we now need to solve two more issues that it creates. The first issue is that the instant wire will only transmit signal as far as it is in chunks that are loaded by the game. The player renders a certain radius around him that allows the game to process redstone, entities and other events. This depends on your simulation distance in the settings. But even on the maximum setting, 
we can only render 32 chunks, which is 512 blocks. This will make the wire stop working when it gets outside the loaded radius. That means that the wire by itself isn't capable of sending signal 1000 blocks away. But of course, we have a solution for this. Chunk loaders allow us, as the name suggests, load chunks in the game. They constantly load an area where they are built, even if the player isn't there. Currently, there are two main ways to create chunk loaders in the game. First is the nether portal based chunk loader. The second is the pearl based chunk loader. Pearls recently got the ability to load chunks. This means that we can use the same bubble column setup to keep the wire loaded at all times. Ender Pearl loads a 3x3 chunk area around the chunk where it is placed. This allows redstone components to continue to work. And that means that if we place a chunk loader in every third chunk along the wire, we can send a signal for thousands of blocks instantly. Ok, so now I can just set up the instant wire for 1000 blocks, load it with chunk loaders, activate a trapdoor, teleport and call it a day. Well, not exactly. We still have two more aims left. We still aren't able to go back and forth. But the wire works in both directions, so with a little bit of redstone engineering, we can make it work go both ways. So now we need to find a way to go from blue to orange using the same wire, but only activating orange trapdoor when we go from blue and vice versa. I have built this little circuit that allows us to do exactly that. The node block is our button to go from this base to the other. We can also mirror the design to have access to two different places from one location. The signal from the node block travels down, triggers the instant wire, and that triggers the other trapdoor in the other base. But because we are using the same wire to activate the trapdoor in both bases, we need to temporarily prevent the signal coming from the instant wire from activating the trapdoor in the base where we are teleporting from. We do that by extending the signal and locking the repeater that would transmit the signal. It unlocks shortly after, so we can teleport back almost instantly. The attached dropper spits out one ender pearl every time the player is teleported to allow him to instantly refill the stasis chamber. To test all the limits of this, I have actually built this in my survival world to see if it's even possible. It wasn't exactly 1000 blocks, but I wasn't far off. So my next video should probably be called questioning my life choices. But before I show you the final footage, let me tell you a few things that I've learned from building this in survival. The main downside is that you constantly need to keep an area loaded and that can create a lot of lag. Another downside is that ender pearls decay when the player dies. So choosing the ender pearl based chunk loader isn't a good idea unless you want to refill them every time you die. If you decide to build this in your world, you also probably want to build the wire as low as possible while your base will be on the surface around Y64.
To send signal vertically up and down, we can use the wall-based and piston-based signal transmission that you can see here. To send signal down instantly, we can use this wall setup. No matter how high you would build this, it changes the states of all these wall blocks immediately, every time a block is placed near them. We can then detect this update with an observer that's attached to the instant wire. To send signal up, we can use this piston, slime block and redstone block setup. This is not exactly instant, but it is the fastest way to send signal up that I know. We can then again detect when the piston moves with an observer and use it to trigger the trapdoor. In survival, you will also need feather falling boots to reduce the damage that teleportation causes and some food to regenerate. And now, what you've been waiting for. Everything is set up. We have the system set up to filter the signals from the instant wire. We have the wire and the chunk loaders all set up for 1000 blocks. We have base 1 at Z3. And base B 1000 blocks away at Z1033. Now, it is really difficult to capture the speed and distance on video, but I'll try my best. Well guys, and that's the end of this video. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I really hope you liked it. If you did, you can support my channel by liking this video and subscribing or watching my other videos. Thank you so much for watching and take care.